Hey guys, I want to tell you that buying land, especially across Africa and in Ghana, is not like buying tomatoes in the market. Let's talk about that when I return on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last. Free at last! Thank God Almighty! We are free at last! Hey guys, welcome. You've just discovered the Eric McNeil Be Free Show, where it's all about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life, and empowering others free. So today, I just want to talk to you about buying land, especially across Africa and uh, in Ghana. Uh, in particular because that's where I'm at and uh, I want you to know that buying that land as I said on my intro it's not like buying uh, tomatoes in the market I actually went to the market yesterday and got these tomatoes um, I haven't been able usually I'm growing tomatoes in my own garden but uh, I didn't grow any uh, recently uh, because I've just been uh, so busy with the uh, sustainable community I had to neglect my garden uh, recently and so I haven't been really growing anything in the garden but um, you know I still have a lot of cassava so it's full of cassava for the most part and you know cassava you don't really have to uh, manage it or water it anything you know you just plant the stalks and uh, it's full of cassava so right now the garden is uh, essentially taken over by cassava but you know it's cool because you can eat that uh, too and I'd probably never eat that much cassava in my life out there in that garden now but um, you know if not uh, the people will eat it or will sell it um, but at any rate um, I also have one of my favorites here uh, well before that you can see that I have uh, some food because I went to the market yesterday and and people this is real food you know my nephew was showing me some of the foods that uh, he and his uh, girlfriend are eating now which uh, you know it had a few a few uh, what I call real food or whole foods uh, in the video he showed me but it had a lot of the stuff that I used to eat and um, I don't really no longer eat a lot of this uh, imitation meat, you know, imitation burgers, imitation this. Um, and, you know, and, and, and let me say this, that uh, like when we talk about a veggie burger, um, there are uh, veggie burgers that you can create that are perfectly wholesome and good, made out of whole food. But normally when you go in, into the store and purchase all of these little uh, uh, types of synthetic meat burgers and stuff and they're advertised as being vegan this or vegan that um, they're really not good they're just a, maybe a notch uh, better than the stuff pumped with chemicals the, 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 the meats pumped with chemicals but they're not all that good for you um, you know all of these synthetic uh, meats that uh, we're eating now but you know everybody goes through a learning process and uh, you know if you <clears throat> keep studying and learning you, you'll see that those things aren't good um, you know and all of the soy based this uh, all soy is not created equally by the way most of the soy that you're buying out of the store has been heavily processed and have uh, you know GMO and uh, things of that nature so you're just trading one uh, bad food for another bad food, right? True food is, is food that you uh, pick and it has God's packaging around that food. That's true food. You know, I got a, uh, you know, that's a, a avocado as a pear, they call it here, but you know, we call it avocado, right? Um, as I was walking home, you know, there's uh, some local mango trees uh, so I just picked a couple of the local mangoes, you know, and nobody cares uh, if you get the local mangoes around here. Um, you know, and I got some pineapple, you know, uh, you know, so this is, this is real food, people, and uh, one of my favorites here, you know, which is the soursop, 
Yep, yep, yep. That's what I'm enjoying enjoy this morning. Um, that's one of my favorites there. So, but this is, you know, one of just some simple tomatoes. But this is real food, right? It, it, it doesn't have all this pretty uh, plastic paper uh, packaging. You know, it's not synthetic. It doesn't last for uh, months or years, you know. Uh, it comes off a tree. It grows off a tree. It rottens, you know, and uh, it goes back to feed the earth if you don't eat it, right? So, um, this is real food. <laughs> I keep telling y'all, that stuff that they've got you, they've got you duped, you know, telling you that, oh, um, you know, uh, this particular uh, food, you know, and this particular food is good for you, this vegan, right? I mean, what do you do if the company, the, the few corporations who own all of this stuff decide they don't want to feed you anymore? Uh, you, you end up or uh, decide that they're going to start putting uh, these ingredients, you don't know what ingredients are being put in those uh, so-called foods they're giving you. So you end up like that movie, you know, um, Soylent Green, very, very old movie. Um, and, you know, I won't tell you, give you the punchline, but uh, if you can get a hold of that movie, you know, uh, I, I recommend you watch it because when you look at all this stuff that you're eating in the store, that's what you're eating, Soylent Green. You know, you don't know what's in it, and uh, you may want to know. You may want to know, but I know what God puts in His food, I'm good with. Now I'm going to cut this open. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it's uh, good and right. Right? It, it, it's soft, but you know, you can, you know, um, yeah. Now, I'll see. He said it would be right today if you didn't do it. So. So, yeah, there's some areas here where sometimes you have these black spots here that I don't mess. Okay, so anyway, um, I didn't get to really enjoy my soursop. Most of it uh, was eaten away by the worms, so I just decided to toss it. And um, that's exactly my point, <laughs> is that uh, purchasing land should not be like purchasing tomatoes or fruit out of the market like you know you get your uh, fruit home you get your vegetables home you know and, uh, and you find out there's a worm in it or something wrong and you can't eat it you know and uh, two you, you have to look at those uh, sour sops I've seen very carefully because they have little punchers in them and uh, the worms get in them and you can't tell from the outside it just looks normal, but on the inside, you can see it's uh, been full of worms. But at any rate, that's exactly what I mean about purchasing land. You just can't do that with land. Like, you can't get it home. So, well, it doesn't work. I got to throw it away. No. So, you take your time. You go through the process. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple examples of uh, the experiences of uh, people uh, so that you understand what I mean by this whole experience. So on one of my YouTube videos, uh, one of the commenters made this comment and said that about, you know, I had mentioned about one of the uh, potential sellers of land uh, uh, going around with fake documents. And uh, so one of the commenters um, made a comment and said, yeah, 
they got me with fake official stamp in Sunyani because the guy was working with someone inside the lands commission. I had to go to court to get my money back. It took years and I ended up spending more money than the actual land scam. Be careful when buying land. See, and then he goes on to say, um, and you don't want to go to their court. They rescheduled four times after I showed up in court. So unprofessional. Please check and check again before handing over any money. And the scammers never get punished, even when caught. They are operating in broad daylight with no consequences. The government needs to do something about it. So that's this person's experience with the whole land issue, guys. So that's where that's why you have to do due diligence ahead of time. You just don't poof, go out and purchase land um, just because everything just seems good. There's there's uh, there's a process. It's a process of due diligence that you, you have to have uh, several parties involved uh, and there's a lot of due diligence that you have to do. Guys, uh, I can't stress that enough. I'm going to share also with you one of uh, the comments from a Facebook friend of mine whom is very, very knowledgeable in real estate and um, he's currently residing in uh, Uganda and has uh, built there and uh, very valuable source of information his name is Tracy Gutner. I'm sure he doesn't mind me giving his uh, information his name but he's a Facebook friend of mine but um, and so he's somebody you should listen to is is you know uh, you know I'm, we've only met on Facebook but uh, I've uh, read his information and um, you know we've chatted several times uh, offline but um, and um, he is also was also a, uh, a professor so they call him Professor G but anyway uh, he says that land deals are notoriously problematic all over Africa. It is very wise to get a full history of the property and a full accounting of real estate of the fees, a full accounting of the fees, bribes, and taxes before purchasing. And so um, Someone goes on to ask him, well, you know, how do you get a full history of the land? And uh, his reply is that, let's see, this is a brief outline of what I did here in Uganda. One, I gather the detailed information off of the parcel title. Two, check comparable prices with check, I'm sorry, check comparable prices and deals with local real estate agents, brokers, websites. Three, get a copy of the seller's national ID or passport along with sales agreement. Four, hire a lawyer with excellent references. Five, together with lawyer, pay a visit to the land office and do a search of the title and map and plot. Make sure to check for liens, taxes, lawsuits, and whether owner is married and if land is community or ancestral. Six, together with lawyer, interview neighbors and gather details of the land ownership history from the local village elders or council chair office. Seven, make any edits to sales agreement and gather all required photos, passport, and transfer taxes, fees, and forms. 
you know. And I just replied to him, due diligence. <laughs> that's, that's what he did, people. That's what we call due diligence. And so many of you come over here and you don't want to take these necessary steps that he outlined here because somebody told you that, oh, uh, you, can get, you can get cheap land in, in, in this place or that place. Yeah, it's cheap because it's likely that the land isn't going to be yours once you buy it. That's why it's cheap. But once you do the due diligence like he did, it's not cheap anymore. No, nope, not, not in the way that you're thinking. Um, so yes, you know, and I just replied, due diligence. And he says exactly. The buyer must beware and assume someone along the process is going to try to run a con. I purchased hundreds of acres of land in the U.S. and the process is very similar except in the U.S. A person's real estate agent and the title company usually does all the heavy lifting. In Africa, most agents aren't certified or insured, and title insurance is almost non-existent. Here, the con could come from a real estate broker, a teller at the bank switching account numbers, the seller or one of their family members, a corrupt lawyer, a village elder, or a random corrupt government agent or someone who got access to your personal information. Right? You don't know where, so you better have eyes in the back of your head and take your time and uh, do some due diligence um, before you just go plopping money down on properties here, I'm telling you guys, I can't stress that enough. Um, so very, very thorough uh, description from Tracy Goodner. Uh, so um, Professor G, thank you for um, just giving uh, this very thorough description and letting the buyers know that they need to be aware. And this is from somebody who's been in the real estate uh, game for dozens of years, people. So he's giving you some real good advice here. So please pay attention to what he's saying uh, so that you don't get got, okay? Um, you know, I've shared, you know, about the new laws that are now seeking to punish uh, people who try and resell land and get involved in these land scams but you know the law by itself it's just the law it's a tool you know and that's the thing people just think that boom something magical will happen just because the tool is there but that's just it it's a tool for people to now be able to use to pursue some of these people but it doesn't happen uh, unless somebody actually goes through the process and sues them and that person has to have uh, everything straight on their side, you know, so, um, yeah, so that's a process, but the best way you can uh, avoid being a victim is do your due diligence ahead of time, you know, because if you have to go into court, people, you've already lost the game. I, I, I'm just going to tell you, if you, you have to go to court, you lost, right? You, you didn't do enough due diligence up front to prevent that. Um, so at any rate, I just wanted to quickly share that with you and, um, hopefully you get something out of it. Uh, so go ahead, hit that subscribe button, uh, like, share, comment, uh, give me your stories. Let me hear what's going on with you in the world of purchasing land. And, um, you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil is free. And as always, hoorah, ahuru, now be free.